Fermi paradox and its possible resolutions. The Fermi paradox is the discrepancy between the lack of conclusive evidence of advanced extraterrestrial life and the apparently high likelihood of its existence. Already in 1950, when discussing the lack of evidence for radio communicative life with colleagues, Italian American physicist Enrico Fermi famously asked, But where is everybody? In the meantime, estimates for the number of stars and galaxies have only gone up. There are probably over 100 billion stars in the Milky Way alone. Estimates for the number of galaxies in the universe have now reached 2 trillion. More and more extrasolar planets are discovered every year. There should be plenty of places where intelligent beings able to communicate over long distances could have developed. In 1961, astronomer Frank Drake wrote an equation that summarises the main concepts which scientists must contemplate when considering the question of other radio-communicative life. The Drake equation was meant to stimulate scientific dialogue at the first scientific meeting on the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, CT. No matter how the equation is specified, given the enormous numbers of stars and planets, there should be a lot of extraterrestrial life in the universe. But despite intensive search by the SETI Institute and other, so far, not a single contact with an extraterrestrial civilization has been established. The question still is, but where is everybody? There have been many attempts to resolve the Fermi paradox. The simplest explanation for the lack of interstellar communication is that it is technically very difficult. Space is enormously large. Our solar system is part of the Milky Way, a medium-sized galaxy that is 100,000 light-years across. Our next neighbour galaxy, Andromeda, is already 2.5 million light-years away. Space is full of dust clouds and magnetic fields. Even a coherent laser-like beam of electromagnetic radiation would face much interference in any long-distance travel across space. But such problems are solvable. Building a laser that can travel long distances in space is already within the reach of available technology. The power output needed to project a signal travelling at the speed of light across huge distances would have to be very large, in the range of 2 megawatts. Such a powerful laser in an interstellar beacon system would be quite destructive. It would pose a danger to any eyeball, plane, spacecraft or satellite crossing its path. Therefore, a good place to build it would be the dark side of the moon. The superlaser would have to be fired through a telescope some 30 to 45 metres in diameter, similar to the 39-metre mirror of the European Extremely Large Telescope that has been set up in Chile. With such an installation, all alien civilizations within a radius of 20,000 light-years could be reached. However, all effort would be in vain if alien civilizations would not be able to detect the signal or they would not understand the communication or the method used to communicate. The most powerful argument against sending laser beams to aliens is another. Stephen Hawking warned mankind to be wary of eagerly advertising its presence, assuming life on another world was subject to evolution by natural selection. It can also be assumed that any dominant species would have a pronounced aggressive trait, just like humans do. A special case of the communication problem hypothesis that is taking up Hawking's argument is the dark forest hypothesis. In a wild forest, predators come out at night, so it is wise to be quiet and not advertise your presence. Similarly, the dark forest hypothesis postulates that many alien civilizations exist throughout the universe, but they are both silent and hostile maintaining their undetectability for fear of being destroyed by another aggressive and undetected civilization. All intelligent beings are just sitting on their planets with the lights out, or rather with their output of electromagnetic waves tightly controlled. The rare Earth hypothesis argues that the evolution of life and especially of intelligent species requires such a complex combination of astrophysical, geological and biological events and circumstances that in the entire history of the universe only very few or even only one higher civilization has ever come into being. The evolution of biological complexity on Earth relied on a host of fortuitous circumstances, such as a galactic habitable zone, a star, and planets having the requisite conditions for a continuous habitable zone within the solar system. 
the advantage of a large moon, conditions needed to ensure the planet has a magnetosphere, an atmosphere and plate tectonics. The specific chemistry of the lithosphere, atmosphere and oceans, the role of evolutionary pumps, such as massive glaciation and rare bolide impacts. Perhaps most importantly, advanced life needs whatever it was that led to the transition of prokaryotic cells to eukaryotic cells. From unicellular to multicellular life, sexual reproduction and evolutionary development bursts such as the Cambrian explosion. The hypothesis concludes, more or less, that complex life is rare because it can evolve only on the surface of an Earth-like planet or on a suitable satellite of a planet under a similar complex set of circumstances and events. If this is correct, the evolution of intelligent life would indeed be a highly improbable phenomenon and likely to be rare throughout the universe as a whole. However, critics of the rare Earth hypothesis state that it is neither hypothesis nor prediction, but merely a description of how life arose on Earth. David Darling remarked, What matters is not whether there's anything unusual about the Earth. There's going to be something idiosyncratic about every planet in space. What matters is whether any of Earth's circumstances are not only unusual, but also essential for complex life. Until extraterrestrial life has been found and studied, nobody knows what is really essential for the evolution of complex life forms in the universe. On Earth, there have been numerous major extinction events that destroyed the majority of complex species alive at the time. It may be the case that such extinction events are common throughout the universe and periodically destroy intelligent life, or at least its civilizations before the species is able to develop the technology to communicate with other intelligent species. New complex life might commonly die out due to runaway heating or cooling on their fledgling planets. Rapid changes in oxygen levels or toxic sulphide production might cause mass extinctions. Massive volcano eruptions can directly destroy entire regions, but also have severe impacts on a planetary scale. A large sulphur-rich explosive volcanic eruption emits droplets of sulfuric acid obscuring the sun and raising Earth's albedo. This will lead to a volcanic winter with greatly reduced global temperatures that can last several years. Volcanic activity did the most damage to life on Earth and a supervolcano eruption might easily end human civilization. More dangers lurk in outer space. Earth is constantly barraged by extraterrestrial debris, about 50 tonnes daily. Almost all the material is vaporised in Earth's atmosphere, leaving a bright trail, the fondly called shooting stars. However, a large object can pass the atmospheric shield and cause severe damage. The dinosaurs were famously killed off at the end of the Cretaceous period by the impact of a large meteorite. Other extraterrestrial catastrophes that can easily destroy civilizations are supernovae the luminous explosions of stars at the end of their lifespan, or gamma-ray bursts, the brightest and most extreme explosive events in the entire universe. Due to relatively common natural extinction events, it may never have occurred that two civilizations with advanced technological possibilities existed at the same time in one corner of the universe. Societal collapse is the fall of a complex human society, characterised by the loss of cultural identity and of social complexity the downfall of government and the rise of violence. Virtually all human civilizations have suffered such a fate, regardless of their size or complexity. What is new today is that humanity is acting at a planetary level and civilizational collapse might be not restricted to some societies but affect the entire species. Some 60,000 years ago, modern humans migrated out of Africa. They found huge animals on all continents that were ecologically naive with no fear of the newly arrived predators. Humans exterminated most of the global megafauna. And, for good measure, they drove the other homo species that still lived outside Africa to extinction. E.O. Wilson famously remarked, The noble savage never existed. Eden occupied was a slaughterhouse. Paradise found is paradise lost. About 10,000 years ago, agriculture was invented. Jared Diamond called it the worst mistake in the history of the human race. Most global ecosystems were completely changed to serve human needs 
causing a spike in species extinctions. For example, when looking at the global body mass of mammals, 60% are now domestic animals, 36% are humans, and only 4% are surviving wild animals. From about 1750 onwards, industrialization resulted in almost total domestication of the planet, the spread of extensive human-made ecosystems, pollution of land, water and air, and changes in the Earth's atmosphere, leading to climate change. Human success has been striking. A simple primate achieved the total conquest and domestication of its home planet, the extermination or reduction of most species not serving the human cause, and a never-before-seen level of consumption of planetary resources in the course of a few generations. The numbers of sapiens have risen from a few thousand to almost ten billion. However, this human victory will not last. It is obvious that rampant resource depletion, species annihilation and destruction of the life-supporting systems are not sustainable. Paradoxically, humans know perfectly what to do to avoid disaster, and they have all the necessary technological instruments, but apparently they are bound by their innate and their culturally ingrained traits. On a global scale, human behaviour is characterised by limitless greed, deification of consumption, myopia, extreme discounting of the future, equaling extreme intergenerational egoism, hate based on imaginary stories, unability to cooperate on a planetary level. Instead of solving the problems, humans choose to celebrate a last unbridled global orgy of total consumption. This stage of human development has been called the age of stupid. Human civilization might now have reached the end stage of a rise and fall cycle. The pessimistic outcome would be intense resource wars, breakdown of all order, and finally collective ecological suicide. Regarding the Fermi paradox, maybe there never existed a truly intelligent civilization. There only have been societies of half wits that all went through a similar rise and fall cycle as Homo sapiens, conquering their planets, eating up all the resources, and then self destruct. The optimistic outcome for the age of stupid would be the billionaire's vision. As humans are unable to change their nature and will stay greedy, myopic, hateful, egoistic and unable to cooperate globally, the only solution is further expansion. To escape collapse and demise, humans will have to infest and exploit other planets. The zoo hypothesis assumes that intelligent civilizations are not rare. They have become interplanetary and interstellar, and have settled in large parts of the universe. However, they prefer not to reveal their existence to primitive life forms such as Homo sapiens. They rather observe the development of such creatures on so called zoo planets or planetary conservation areas. Again, there is the question where are these aliens? In human imagination, aliens traditionally have two homes flying saucers and the fifth dimension. Flying saucers are regularly spotted in the United States, especially during summer holidays. It seems that such saucers are the most common mode of transport for aliens. There have been speculations that beings or entities could exist in extra dimensions, coexisting alongside our familiar 3D world. There could be extra spatial dimensions beyond the ones we are aware of. However, these theoretical extra dimensions are compactified or curled up at extremely small scales. A possible fifth dimension might be curved so tightly that it's smaller than an atom. Such extremely small-scale dimensions don't seem to be a very pleasant living space for organisms, let alone entire civilizations. Things could be a lot simpler. Technologically advanced aliens could comfortably live in the known 3D world and hide from human exploration by jamming or manipulating electromagnetic signals coming from or going to Earth. A much darker variant of the zoo hypothesis is the laboratory hypothesis suggested by John Allen Ball in which humanity is being subjected to experiments, with Earth serving as a giant research facility. Aliens use the inhabitants of Earth, just like humans torture and kill thousands of laboratory animals. Such experiments could be local, regional or global. For example, when humans think they have won the fight against infectious diseases, a virus such as Covid is introduced. Or, when human society finally seems to be peaceful, beyond the stage of old-school territorial wars of conquest, a Vladimir Putin is let loose.
But how would the aliens react if the billionaires' vision would come true and humans would infest other planets? Maybe the intelligent beings would send a pest control unit. This would mean to stop human expansion and sanitise planets that might have already been infected, much like human biologists try to stop the spread of rats to remote islands with ecologically naive fauna. A much more radical version of pest control is postulated in the Berserker Hypothesis. As soon as a civilization is advancing toward the potential for a colonisation explosion, where humans are now, it is destroyed by a lethal von Neumann probe, created by a more advanced civilization. In the worst case scenario, humanity has already alerted alien superintelligences to its existence and is next in line to be annihilated. Colonization of other planets would not lead to containment but to complete destruction. This potential threat should be an additional argument for humanity to better sort out things at home. In our video on Zoo Planet Earth, we explore the maybe most exotic of all scenarios the visit of extraterrestrials who show compassion to the human predicament. Nobody has ever met aliens, therefore finding compassionate intelligent beings who help to sort out human follies is an improbable but legitimate possibility. But humanity should not bet on it. We are the only ones who can help ourselves. There should be no expectation of mentors or saviours to step down from the sky on our behalf. Mm -hmm.